night and day. Maybe I should start this by saying I don't hate Tom Cruise. I don't have a problem with him as an actor or an entertainer. He's done well in movies that I like a lot. Still, I do have to say, it has now been a while since he did the whole I love Katie, I love Katie thing, and perhaps he's looking to improve his image, which is of course why he took the lead in a high-profile action movie as someone who may or may not be batshit crazy and who kills people because he thinks that psychology is an evil practice. Okay, so that's not entirely accurate, but honestly, the only part I made up was the psychology bit. I don't know, it just makes me wonder if Tom Cruise knows the meaning of the phrase opening the door. Again, I don't hate Cruise, I just think that the people making fun of his devotion to his superstitious cult should be as vocal in making fun of him as he is in promoting it and in insulting psychology. With that said, if you're still with me, this a fine little piece of mindless entertainment. I figured I'd say it up front this time because I've been told that when I talk too much about the negative early on, it makes people think that I couldn't stand the movie or the game or show or whatever. But no, if mindless entertainment is what you want, if you go into this knowing exactly what you should expect, then this should do nicely. It's not as much fun as the A-Team, but it does do some things right that, frankly, we don't take for granted anymore in big Hollywood blockbusters. The two leads are actually fairly developed. You know, you come out after about 100 minutes of film and you feel like you sort of got to know them. I can't say that about anyone but those two, but hey, they are the focus. There are a handful of comic relief characters in this, but other than that, everyone is fairly realistic and straightforward. And this isn't constantly trying to make us laugh by throwing over the top or just plain weird stuff at the audience. With that said, I gotta say, the comedy hardly ever works in this. I watched this on opening day at my local theater. The room itself was about a quarter of the way full, and at best, there were sporadic laughs. I'm not sure I'm really enough of an expert at comedy to determine if it's the timing, the material, other factors, or a combination thereof that is to blame here, but the result is plain and simple. What I can say is a lot of it is very full. People are saying things that don't sound natural, or in ways that don't sound natural. And then there's the dialogue, which is Seinfeldy, you know, the sitcom. Let me take the scene that everyone saw in the trailer, which, by the way, understated how bad the dialogue when it tries to be funny. When it doesn't, it's fine. The bit on the plane. The pilots are gone. Gone? Gone where? They're dead. Shot. Shot? Who shot the pilots? I did. Well, I shot one of them, and so on, and so on, and so on. And now for something completely different. I didn't go in expecting to love it, but I would be lying if I claimed that I was ever bored during it. The film keeps your attention throughout. There's a nice amount of action, keeping in mind that it is an action comedy, not a pure action film. And I'd say somewhere between half of it and three-fourths of it works well, you know, gets you excited. The action scenes tend to be fairly short, and there is a sense of immediacy to them. You know, you get the impression that if their reflexes aren't exactly fast enough, they will die or something bad will happen. The action is over the top at times, but it isn't, you know, John Woo. There are some fairly cool guns, but this takes the audience to a few exotic locations, and I would like to note that this is yet another example of the tried-and-true method of putting a hot shake in a bikini working out quite well. With that said, Diaz is playing down her looks a bit in this, you know, it isn't like her role in The Mask, for example. She seems approachable, and you can relate to her. And believe it or not, you relate to Cruz, too. There's a nice character arc to both of them. I mean, the ending is quite dumb, and in some ways comes out of nowhere. But it is also an example of something in the movie that has both a setup and a payoff. Which is true of a good deal of them. Again, not something you always get in summer blockbusters. It is kind of funny how, with the PG-13 
rating now allowing, you know, a specific amount of swearing, they make use of that in this, making nearly every swear word in this stick out like a sore thumb. Finally, I just gotta ask, is Roy Miller that awesome of an American guy name? It was Tom Cruise's name in this movie, it was Matt Damon's name in Green Zone. I don't know, I just wonder. Bottom line, if you really gotta watch a summer blockbuster action flick, and you've already seen The A-Team as many times as you're going to, go ahead and, and go watch this one. Well, that was my spoiler for review. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.